Vision, issues one and two. Quite possibly the weirdest, most nonsensical comic I read in 2014. For reasons, the Vision decides to eliminate the emotional component of his programming. So what does he do after that? Why create his own robot family? Of course. The Visions are living in suburbia and dealing with the everyday world. The comedy comes from people awkwardly interacting with them as they go through the motions and try to behave as ordinary people. The drama also comes from these awkward interactions, the occasional supervillain attack, and the fact that while none of them should have human emotions, it's obvious that they do. Writing and art wise, I don't know anything about this creative team. Writer Tom King's work here is subtle at times and also at times a bit off kilter. Plus the story threads he introduces is enough to keep me interested for the next couple of issues. Artist Gabriel Hernandez Walta's art reminds me of a slightly looser John Romita Jr. It's less blocky and angular. The colors are by Jordi Belair and they seem to be a bit muted but it actually fits the understated tone of this series. The only negative so far is after two issues, the reader still doesn't know why the Vision created this family. The way the story is going, that might not be answered for a long while, and considering the way this comic comes off, I believe that's a bit of a mistake. This comic might get cancelled after four or six issues because it's so weird. Addressing some of the plot points will be important for new readers to want to keep on reading. That said, I do recommend this book. It's a very strange book and because of that, I don't think it will have very much crossover appeal, but the art in the story is intriguing enough for me to keep reading. Hopefully, we will start receiving answers soon about those plot points. Next, Harley's Little Black Book. It's a one shot. The year of Harley continues. The issue opens with Harley and her gang of Harleys busting up some type of trafficking ring, during which we finally see Harley come out of the closet of being a Wonder Woman fangirl. We get a flashback of Harley as a kid and how Wonder Woman inspired her to stand up for herself. Just not the way her parents wanted to. Well, in the present time, Diana's visiting London and a local gang is planning to kill her. Harley visits her at her apartment and yeah, 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 a bush of roses, the London Legion of Superheroes, a, a missile launcher layer. We have quite possibly the oddest and most slapstick team up of the year. This comes from the same writing team of the current Harley Quinn series, Jimmy Palmati and Amanda Khan. So expect almost the same tone. Actually, I'd say the tone of the series more resembles the Harley Quinn issue zero. It's more madcap than the regular series. The current series tend to have a more settled or serious tone. It's funny, but the series has a tone that resembles the artwork, or at least it feels that way. The comic is drawn by two sets of artists, Amanda Connor and John Thames and Dave Johnson. I understand that Amanda Connor says she can't do a monthly series anymore, but come on, this is a special. Either she should do the whole thing or let the artist who isn't a regular artist for the current series do it. Also, who are the London Legion of Superheroes? They pop up here, but you get the feeling you're missing a chunk of the story. Reading this, I got the feeling that the writers just assumed we either knew who they were or, eh, it doesn't matter, just roll with it. That said, if you like issue zero, then this is more like that. Also, Amanda Connor does illustrate about half of the pages. Unlike in other comics when multiple artists draw the same issue, you don't notice the differing styles as much here. If the regular series had this pacing and level of comedy, I probably would have liked it better, even though I already like it, the series as is. So yeah, I do recommend this. With the exception of a scene or a comedy here or there, this is mostly all ages, so give it a read. And finally, Hellcat number one. Hey, did you like the unbeatable score girl? If not, skip. If so, then let's continue. You know how it takes some comics more than an issue to give the character's origin or backstory? This issue does that in less than a page. We get an idea of Patsy Walker's beginnings, her powers, and what she's been up to recently. And then we just hit the ground running with the story. It is interesting that the recent incarnations of Patsy Walker and Hellcat are more comedic considering about 
10 or so years ago, she was known as more of a dark character, or at least the stories that I read of her. The story begins with Patsy planning on starting a superhuman temp agency. That actually makes sense. Why hasn't this concept ever happened before? Well, anyway, we then flash back to Patsy confronting and then bonding with a failed and beginning supervillain. From then on, the story becomes more of a superpowered slice of life story. The recent Batgirl, Squirrel Girl, and Hellcat comics are similar in that they're more fun and comedic. Of the three, Batgirl is the most serious and Squirrel Girl is more slapstick. One thing I did notice though is all three have a similar artistic and comedic style. You can tell the difference but the creators have to make sure that they keep them a bit different otherwise they'll split the consumer base that they're aiming for. After all, why buy three of the same thing? Also, will actual supervillains pop up in this series? Will every encounter be handled comedically or will some dramatic tension pop up in it as well? I do recommend this series. I like the art and tone of the series, but I do wonder, is this how the rest of the series will be? Is the writer writing to compliment the artist or is the artist being used to compliment the writer? When another writer pops up on this series later on, will the tone change drastically? I wonder this because in Dan Slott's She-Hulk run, it had a playful tone whenever artist Juan Babalo drew it and there was a complete U-turn when someone else drew it. It was really overly dramatic. It was very jarring. As long as the tone and the art stay the way it is, I'll keep reading it. And until my next review, goodbye.